In this video, I will share with you Dr. Rhonda Patrick's top 10 tips for health volume 4. Number 10 is do not eat late at night. There are two reasons why you should stop eating at least two to four hours before bed. Number one is that if you don't do that, it will negatively impact your gut health and digestion. Because your body cannot really digest food and move it forward in your digestive tract when you are in a horizontal position. So the food you eat will just stay at wrong places and it will lead to the creation of all sorts of bad bacteria, which can for example lead to SIBO and candida overgrowth. Eating right before you go to bed would also decrease your sleep quality, so do not do that. Number nine is to get enough magnesium. Magnesium is the single most common nutrient deficiency on the planet Earth. Almost everybody is deficient and our diet is to blame. It is interesting because if you were to eat a lot of whole plant foods, you would not have to worry about magnesium whatsoever and you would probably get two times the amount that you need. But the problem is that most people get most of their calories from cereal, bread and meat. Which is a pity because then they become deficient in magnesium and this is a horrible deficiency to have. It will not seem dramatic in the short term because it will not make you for example depressed like vitamin D deficiency would. But in the long run, being deficient in magnesium will cause you to age much faster. So you obviously want to incorporate fruits, vegetables, whole grains. But if you are severely deficient in magnesium because of your past habits, then I encourage you to take supplements. Do not take magnesium oxide. It is the most common form. It is cheap. It does not really have side effects, but it also does not have any benefits. The one potential benefit that it has is that it works as a laxative. But the magnesium citrate or gluconate will be much better for you as far as fixing your magnesium status. Number eight tip from Rhonda Patrick is to supplement with garlic. She claims that garlic reduces your inflammation significantly. And I could not agree more. Garlic is the real superfood. When it comes to cleaning up your gut, when it comes to boosting your immune system and preventing viruses as well as bacterial infections. And again, it is amazing for fighting inflammation. Rhonda recommends taking 1000 milligrams of garlic in a supplemental form. You do not have to take supplements though. In my opinion, eating raw garlic is fine and it actually is better than taking supplements. Both are fine though. And if you don't like raw garlic for whatever reason, supplement is amazing. Number seven is to avoid refined carbohydrates. There are so many health reasons to replace the refined carbohydrates that come from bread and pasta and pizza with complex ones. And it doesn't even take you that much willpower to go for whole wheat bread instead of white one or to put barley groats into your soup instead of white pasta. These tiny tweaks will have amazing impact on your health even if you are not ready to let go of your pasta and your bread. Number six is that saturated fat on itself is not bad. The real problem comes when you combine saturated fat with a lot of sugar and refined carbohydrates. I personally am on a high carb diet and my genetics don't really like saturated fat, therefore it would harm me, but that doesn't mean it is harmful for everybody. It really pays off to know your genes when it comes to saturated fat which I'm sure Rhonda would agree with. If you care about health and you want to eat saturated fat, it is fine, but please get your genes tested. Rhonda Sab, by the way, is a great way to utilize the results that you will get from these tests. Number five is to take coenzyme Q10, CoQ10. I always used to think that CoQ10 is a brain nutrient. That is the case, but what I learned is that people who do not have enough coenzyme Q10 have much higher chance for heart problems. And if you supplement with CoQ10, you can greatly reduce the risk. There are no good dietary sources of CoQ10. Some people say that organ meats are way to go, but if you look at organ meats, they contain just a few milligrams at most. You want to be taking 100 milligrams per day. That seems to be the optimal dose. I personally do not take CoQ10 just yet, but once I'm older, I definitely will. And the older you are, the more you will benefit from the supplement. Number four is do not drink coffee if you are pregnant. Because when you do drink a lot of caffeine when you are pregnant, your child will have a higher chance for ADHD 
and attention difficulties. Do not judge yourself if you already have children and you used to drink caffeine when you were pregnant. That is not the point. The point is, if you are gonna have children in the future, do not drink caffeine when you are pregnant. It's not that big of a deal if you drink some coffee or tea here and there when you are pregnant. It's just that you want the best for your children, right? So you don't want to do stuff that would harm them. Number three is to take a sauna after you exercise. Rhonda is a huge fan of saunas. We talked about it in the past episodes. But when you take a sauna is very important. As far as I remember, Rhonda once said that it is good to take sauna before bed and then take a cold shower. But recently she said that if you take a sauna after you exercise, it will improve your recovery. That is because it will keep your muscles warm for a while. Number two is another tip for mothers and that is to feed your children with breast milk. This might seem obvious, but the reason I am saying this is because it is crucial. There is such a big difference between a kid who drinks breast milk and a kid who does not. If you feed your kid the fake breast milk, you cannot expect him to be healthy later on in his life. It can damage his gut and immune system for life. Not only that, but the kid will also have a higher chance of mental health issues and all that stuff. Many of these are now reversible at least partially but if you can why not prevent that in the first place tip number one is to avoid e-cigarettes the electronic cigarettes there was a big debate a couple years ago on whether or not e-cigs are harmful now we already have some studies showing very negative effects do not smoke e-cigs they are just as bad as regular cigarettes if not worse and by the way even if you smoke e-cigs even if you eat refined carbohydrates Whatever you do, you are awesome. And I love you and I will see you next time. Subscribe for more.